The Los Angeles Rams hosting the San Francisco 49ers for week two of the 2023 NFL season. Before we hop into the full game preview here, well, we have a Ram Showcase t-shirt giveaway going for you. So all I'm going to need from you is wherever you can hear me, what I need you to do is drop a comment on just who your favorite Rams player is. And then we will pick a, uh, a random person. We'll do it on the live stream on Ram Showcase Live on Monday. You can find that on the Ram Showcase YouTube channel as well as Facebook page. And, uh, well, we'll just do that. Uh, we'll, we'll pull the winner there. Uh, we'll do a randomizer on the Internet, and uh, we'll do it that way. Um, then you get to pick out your shirt, uh, we, your color and uh, size and all that stuff uh, from All Pro Sports. AJ helping me out uh, with another giveaway, getting you a Ram Showcase T-shirt. If you don't want to leave it up to chance, you just want one for yourself, ramshowcase.com. You know, you click on that merch tab, and uh, you can uh, search them right on there. So, again, that is just comment your favorite player uh, wherever you can hear me. If uh, you don't feel like I'm seeing it or anything like that, go ahead and tweet me. Go ahead and uh, send me a message on Instagram or Twitter. Facebook Messenger is not a good spot to uh, reach me, but uh, those other places, definitely reach out to me. I will confirm with you that you are entered uh, by liking it or responding to you in uh, some forum that way. So, let's get into the game preview, though. Like I said, 49ers at Rams. Both teams coming in at a 1-1. One and one. This game goes down at SoFi Stadium this coming Sunday, September 17th at 1.05 p.m., which, uh, can we stop? Can we stop doing the 105s? All right, because the first games aren't over yet, and some of us like to go out for the game, and this just means we miss, like, the first 20 minutes, which is a whole bag of bummers, but either way, I think it's going to be okay uh, because, well, hey, it's Rams football, and we can wait for it, right? Um, also, if you are a better, Rams are uh, coming in plus eight on this one. Eight point favorites for the 49ers when the Rams are at home? Are you kidding me? Hey, I'm I'm hammering that all day. Rams money lines plus 280 over under the 44. This is all according to FanDuel. First half spread even at uh, Rams plus five and a half. I don't know about uh, you, but uh, I'm feeling good about this one. I'll take these. All right. <laughs> I'm, do I'm totally taking these. After that game against the Seahawks, Seems like this team's hungry. Seems like this team's fast and, uh, well, ready to prove some people wrong. So hopefully that does continue. Quick note on the uniforms for this game as um, the 49ers fans are, they're, they're hilarious because, well, first of all, the uh, Rams have chosen to wear white uniforms for this game. They're white jerseys, uh, which means that the 49ers will be in their reds. The 49ers fans seem to think that this is a 49ers choice that they have chosen to wear the reds because, quote unquote, it's they're like their south home or whatever they call it. I don't know. But they, uh, they were like, oh, it's a home game for us anyway. So uh, might as well wear the reds. That was our choice. Uh, the Rams chose whites. In fact, the 49ers kind of jumped the gun a little bit because if you look at their uniform schedule, they thought they were supposed to be in whites for this game. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what you're supposed to do with that information, but it is real. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, obviously uh, they both said that they were going to be wearing whites. Uh, but of course, um, that can't happen. No, 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 can't happen. So, uh, yeah, of course, uh, the home team does choose, though, meaning that uh, the other team, the 49ers in this situation, will have to switch it up and uh, they'll be in their reds. So some uh, milestones that we're looking for in this game. Matthew Stafford getting real snug in here, which is really cool to see. He needs just 191 passing yards to pass Peyton Manning for third most in first 200 games. And he does have until I think it's week nine or ten. Uh, somewhere in that range, to get this, which is 191 passing yards. So keep your eyes on that. Uh, should be able to pass Peyton Manning in that respect. Also, two passing touchdowns to pass Pat Hayden for seventh most touchdown passes in franchise history, which uh, feels insane to me because, uh, well, Matthew Stafford, if you don't know, feels still pretty new to the Rams. I mean, he played the one full season, then a shortened season. He's already coming in now. Two passing touchdowns to pass Pat Hayden for seventh most all-time in passing touchdowns in Rams history. He does need 4,607 yards to move into 10th all-time in passing yards, passing Eli Manning, and 33 touchdowns to move into top 10 all-time in that, uh, that category, passing touchdowns. Again, passing Eli Manning. Tight end Tyler Higby. He does need 58 catches to pass uh, Robert Woods for eighth most in franchise history. So, of course, uh, if you did that in one game, holy moly. But uh, yeah, kind of keep well, we'll keep our eyes on this number and see how that kind of keeps on whittling down. Did have three this past week. Uh, so, of course, I mean, it's it's not guaranteed that he will hit this this uh, this season. Uh, but he is uh, ninth in, in uh, Rams history right now with uh, receptions and uh, looking to pass Bobby Trees. 
He doesn't need two touchdown passes, Tyler Higby does, to pass Preston Denard to move into top 10 franchise history in uh, touchdown receptions. He already does lead that category in tight ends, but uh, could move into the top 10 passing Preston Denard if he can get two more. And uh, defensive lineman Aaron Donald, he does need 10 tackles to pass Alec Ogletree to be second all-time in tackles in franchise history. Laurinaitis still holding uh, the number one spot there. He needs three fumble recoveries uh, to lead the team all-time in that category, which I was unaware of last week. But hey, three feels real, right? He should be able to become the Rams' most or like all-time leading fumble recoverer <laughs> uh, at some point this season. We get three. I think that, yeah, that feels real, right? And uh, he does need two more starts to move into top 10 in uh, franchise history in game starts. And if you aren't aware, well, this franchise is pretty old and uh, has had some absolute monsters on it. So for him to get into the top 10 of there, obviously, we love to see it. Some connections for you. Uh, We have the uh, former Rams on the 49ers defensive game, uh, defensive pass game specialist in Nichols coach. That is so specific. <laughs> it is what what? <laughs> Such a specific job. But either way, uh, <laughs> uh that is uh Nick Sorensen. And uh he played for the Rams uh 2001 and 2002. So he was a player. And then uh, of course uh quarterback Brian Al- or excuse me, Brandon Allen, uh he did uh participate as a backup quarterback for the Rams in 2017 and 18. Former 49ers on the Rams, we have secondary coach Chris Beak. Uh, 98, uh, he was, he was there 99 with a different role, 2000 to 2002 with a different role, 2003 with a different role. And then of course, 2010 as well. Wide receiver coach, Eric Yarbs, Yarbs. Uh, he was there in uh, 2003, 2004 offensive coordinator, Mike LaFleur. He was there in 2017, 18, and then 1920 in a different role. And then of course, uh, Akello Witherspoon making his, uh, his return against the 49ers he played there from 2017 to 2020 and uh offensive lineman coleman shelton 2018 uh just a short timer uh with the 49ers which is pretty cool to see and some uh some teammates here some former teammates kind of getting back together here of course sean mcveigh and kyle Kyle shanahan they coached together in washington i feel like most of us kind of know that one raheem morris and kyle shanahan they coached together in atlanta and tampa Rams linebackers Jake Hummel and Zach Van Valkenburg played with Brock Purdy at Iowa State. Linebacker Ernest Jones played with Debo Samuel at Carolina in college. A.J. Jackson, the Rams starting left tackle, and George Kittle did play at Iowa together. They were both Hawkeyes. And then uh, Jordan Fuller and Nick Bosa. Also, uh, they took the field on the same defense at Ohio State. So really, I mean, obviously the story that we're looking at in this game is very, very simple. The 49ers have won eight straight regular season games against the, the the Rams. And there's a key word in there, regular season. All right. So obviously we don't want to lose just all the regular season games, but let's also not forget that once it gets to the postseason, Rams are stacking dubs. All right. So that's really cool to see. And obviously like going into that game though, I'll say this is that like the whole story in that NFC championship game, the Super Bowl was at SoFi Stadium. You were hosting your most hated rival. So you, uh, the Rams, were standing in between the the two options of host a Super Bowl in your venue, you get to play at SoFi Stadium, your own mecca, and you get to play there in a Super Bowl, or on the flip side of that, you have to watch your most hated rival take field at your stadium for a Super Bowl. And obviously it just felt like that. the Rams just weren't going to let that happen. Like just the that whole game, the whole way it unfolded. Uh, it, obviously, it was like a ten. It was a it was a two possession game in the fourth quarter, going into the fourth quarter, and then the Rams end up winning that game. Uh, but obviously, that's such a massive, monumental game. And I will say, I don't want to say it takes away all eight <laughs> of those losses against the 49ers, but it's at least three, right? I mean, that's got like it counts for so much. All right, you can have all the regular season wins you want if we meet in the playoffs and we win those. I mean, I'll take that. Obviously, it sucks, though. You don't want to keep losing to your rival. Uh, So this is a good opportunity to kind of change that narrative a little bit. Obviously, the 49ers looked really good last week. The Rams looked really good last week. So kind of both teams kind of just button heads here. And you got a a tale of two teams, really. You have a team in the 49ers who everybody feels very confident is going to be very competitive this year. And a lot of people are picking them to, A, go to the Super Bowl, and B, maybe win it. So 
Uh, there's not a lot of people picking the Rams to do that, so that's where the separation comes. Like the Rams and 49ers both did great last week, uh, but of course, going into this game, it just the media and like obviously the line being an eight-point line here. Obviously, there's a lot of separation in um, in the vibe of of a uh, of of like what each or like what media thinks that these teams will do by the end of the season. Like everybody kind of. It feels like most people are kind of looking at that Rams win over the Seahawks as kind of like a, yeah, well, like, we'll see, like, well, uh, can they do it again kind of thing? Like, and, and, and also I think a lot of the comments that I saw were like, oh man, what's up with the Seahawks? Are they not good? It's like, well, or, or, or maybe the Rams are sick, <laughs> you know? So there's also that part of it. So, uh, yeah, I don't know either way this, um, this this entire storyline of uh, the Rams and 49ers and the 49ers just kind of owning the Rams that's a that's a word that gets tossed around a lot. Um, but uh, either way, I mean, uh, if the 49ers fans and that team want to celebrate being second best in the NFC uh, multiple years in a row, hey, I mean, more power to them. That's awesome. I would rather go be first place it, like in one season and then kind of fall off the next than just like keep being almost good enough but not you know I, and maybe i'm alone there maybe my emotions there are uh are are kind of geared off of the fact that that's what happened with the rams and I've, i'm pretty happy about it but uh i see a lot of uh comments of uh of, of 49ers fans saying stuff along the lines of uh it's like well they they bought their team in 2021 and uh they they sold out for a win it's like well then why don't why don't you guys do it then <laughs> is it's not that easy <laughs> it's like I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So that's kind of what the the, the entire storyline going into this week is. And um, kind of what we're looking at is if the Rams win, we kind of get that, um, that that monkey off the back a little bit. We kind of get that uh, like, okay, cool. Now we can move on. We go to Cincy again, like next next week, and then Indy, Philly. Like we got a tough stretch ahead of us, but we can kind of get like that, that stank off of us a little bit. You know what I mean? So that'll be obviously good. And then if the 49ers win, It'll be very much just like, oh yeah, this is what they were supposed to do. They're a very good roster, very good team. So, um, it, yeah, uh, and they are. That's uh, that's definitely not a lie. Uh, they have a very very strong roster, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, like we talked about last week, that uh, Sean McVay tends to kind of have the number of the Pete Carroll Seahawks, and in the opposite way, uh, Kyle Shanahan kind of has the number of Sean McVay in the Rams. So. Hopefully, um, obviously, we can get uh, a little bit of a change here. It's been four years, uh, four four years of uh, of regular season losses against the, our most hated rival. Uh, but um, obviously, uh, it's got to break eventually, right? Like the, the 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 streaks end. You know what I mean? And it is broken because of that uh, little that little NFC Championship game that you might have remembered uh, at SoFi Stadium. The whole you know the the ring me is I uh, got as such such a beautiful moment. You know what I mean? <laughs> Good stuff. Also, a uh, fun fact here. Uh, I saw this from JB Long. So uh, it's the first ever NFL game between a quarterback pick first overall and Mr. Irrelevant. But of course, like he had also mentioned, uh, JB did in his tweet uh, that it is also uh, Brock Purdy's the first uh, Mr. Irrelevant in the draft era to throw a pass. So that's cool. I mean, we have the Mr. Irrelevant uh, this year, uh, Deswan Johnson. He was inactive in week one. We also had David Vabora a couple weeks back or uh, years back. Uh, those were the St. Louis years, I guess. Is it is it also blown anybody else's mind right off that the Rams have now been back in LA for eight years? Like I, I've not grasped that fully yet. So it's it's uh, they're they're stacking the time up, uh, but that is absolutely wild. So. Uh, history of this matchup, of course, uh, the 49ers do lead the all-time series 77, 68, and 3. This is the 149th all-time meeting between these two. The current streak is the 49ers at 2. Of course, though, like I said uh, earlier, the 49ers have won the last eight regular season matchups. Very important term there, regular season. Regular season. Y'all can have those. All right, so... Regular season matchups, of course, uh, but that uh, that NFC Championship game, just that little thorn in there. First ever game between these two came on the 1st of October of 1950. The Rams won that game 35-14, to and the most recent game between these two uh, came on the day before Halloween last year, the 30th, and uh, the Rams did fall in that game 14-31 uh, to to the 49ers. We talked about it last week as well that uh, Matthew Stafford did not see a game against the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, we saw the Wolf, ow, and then uh, we also saw uh, Baker Mayfield at the end of the season. So 
Uh, we did see Matthew Stafford play in both games against the 49ers last year, but obviously it did not come uh, up into our favor. Let's take a peek at the matchup. Put it on up. So the Rams total offense third in the NFL without Cooper Cup. What? Going against the 11th ranked defense of the 49ers. Passing the football second in the league. 334 from Matthew Stafford in the Rams pass attack. Going against the 18th ranked uh, pass defense in the 49ers. And the, on the ground, Rams uh, did have a little bit of trouble getting that rolling tied for 18th. Uh, going against the number one run defense in the 49ers. They absolutely shut down that Steelers uh, run attack. But also kind of just did a great job, uh, especially in the first half against the 49ers. And points being sco scored, the Rams put up 30. That is tied for 6th. While the uh, 49ers defense just gave up seven, which is third in the NFL. I think it's very important to remember on both sides, Rams and 49ers here, that uh, the next time we play this team, uh, these numbers are going to be very different. All right. So that's just the way it's going to work right now. These are not necessarily averages. These are just what happened last week. So that's all we have to go off of right now. We're not going to dig into last year because, well, that's gone now. That's, that's over there. That's, that's, way, that's, that's way in the past. We don't need to look at that for uh, any averages or anything. And obviously, this is a very different team right now. You can already tell it's a different team. The whole vibe is different of this team going into this year uh, than it was last year. And we had some like energetic, you know, games. Uh, there was kind of the kind of got peppered in there a little bit. We had obviously the Raiders game on Thursday night football, Christmas Day against the, the Broncos, stuff like that. But either way, that's all irrelevant. So these numbers, of course, just coming from week one, we we'll kind of follow these uh, these rankings as we move on. But the Rams. Uh, passing attack looking really, really, really strong and uh, total offense third in the NFL going into week two. Absolutely love to see it. Um, I'm not sure how many people really had that uh, as their like a prediction of like of like, oh, man, the Rams are going to light it up and have two receivers go over 100 and make Fox give us the most random statistic of all time of two two at will Puka Nakua, the first uh, Rams wide receivers under 23 to go over 100 in the same game. While it's like while the sun is in this area and it's a full moon and all like I don't know they get pretty deep in these stats and it was kind of like I saw that and it was like what <laughs> like that's that's not real like you who researches that that is absurd but either way um, cool numbers either way I mean Puka and Tutu obviously kicking butt cheeks out here so it was really cool to see our three to C on the offensive side for the Los Angeles Rams we'll go ahead and kick it off with Matthew Stafford. Stafford looked sick as hell on Sunday in Seattle and obviously uh, looks like he feels good. That's the key, right? Um, he told us he felt good. We kind of just believed it. Uh, some of us did. I, I just, I took it and was like, yep, he feels great. <laughs> you know, I don't know how he feels really, but I know uh, some fans too, they were like, he's lying. Like, uh, but uh, well, he looks like he feels good. He, will, he played like he feels good in week one. So hopefully that continues. He was moving well. He's seen the field well. Uh, all good right now for number nine. So keep your eyeballs on him. Uh, let's see how the season progresses with this guy because now he is the oldest starting quarterback in the NFL with Aaron Rodgers going down. So we'll see how he looks by, by you know, time we get to like week 11, 12, 13. See if he's still, you know, getting that little hip twist and, and pass like he had. That was such a sick play. And I can't show it on here or anything like that. Um, but uh, that play where he did, it was like a quick little play action and then just like, boom boom and it was sick so uh it, the, it was on the qb school jt sullivan talking about that play specifically so like that it was just awesome man good stuff next up running back kyron williams williams did have more snaps than cam Akers last week um and so based on uh how the the carries are going here i know like people keep asking like it's like well hey is um is kyron williams gonna take the rb1 spot from cam Akers? it's like maybe he has like i don't know like he's getting more touches right and then i know that the averages on uh cam Akers last uh week were were not great but also i mean it's week one i mean something that happened last week does not exactly mean like that's just what was going to happen this week you know what i mean like each game has its own identity its own rhythm its own flow uh players feeling good players maybe not feeling that great um going in and i'm not talking about injuries it's like i know for myself I'm a radio DJ. It's like some days I'm going in, I'm feeling good. Dude. Like I'm just nailing it. I feel awesome. I'm like hitting the post. I'm getting good jokes. I'm nailing phone calls and all this stuff. Just feeling in, in line, dude. Feel, like feel, feeling into that little rut there and just like, just feeling nice. On the opposite side of that, there's days where I just feel awkward and I'm like, just not, like, it's not, it's not going well. And I'm kind of stumbling over myself and stuff like that. 
And it happens. And it happens in every profession. I'm sure you at your job or you at school or whatever kind of have that same thing where there's some days you're just like, I'm nailing. I'm good at this. But like, they should be so happy they have me. And there's other days I'm like, I can't believe they, they let me do this. Like, you know? Um, so I'm sure uh, that's, the, that's the same with every profession, just like these guys too. Like maybe Matthew Stafford, it was just a sick day. Or maybe for Cam Akers, maybe it's just a, uh, not, he just wasn't really feeling it, you know? But maybe this week he will be. So obviously we're still dealing with human beings as much as we like to treat them like fantasy players and pawns and stuff like that of like, of just like, and like if somebody gets hurt, it's like, well, let's just get them the hell out of here. Let's get the next guy in. And I realize that is how the game is played and that injuries do happen. I'm not trying to take anything away from that, but there's also just the fact of like, these are human beings with like lives and families and like likes and dislikes and hobbies and like favorite foods and stuff. Like, I don't know. There's just uh there's a lot, a lot to it in, uh, in here. So we try to try to be nice <laughs> about it, but, uh, Cam Akers, either way, um, I don't expect that whatever happened last week, that that just continues into this week. It just like is how he is for the whole season. I just don't see that as a as a legitimate thing. But on the flip side of that, I have Kyron Williams on this list for a reason. And it's because Kyron Williams looked awesome last week, almost had three touchdowns, his first almost three touchdowns of his career, did score his first two touchdowns of his career, which is awesome to see. So super cool for Kyron. And I would anticipate and expect that he is going to continue to get a good chunk of carries. We kind of expected this with uh, the way that he was not playing in uh, the, the preseason games. Uh, but either way, I mean, I don't care who it is. Just score touchdowns, right? It's like, just do, do, do the thing and do it well. And if it happens to be Cam Akers, hell yeah, Cam. If it happens to be Kyron, well, hell yeah, Kyron. If it happens to be Ronnie, hell yeah, Ronnie. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> hell yeah, Zach. Whoever it is, just uh, do the thing. And then uh, my last one here on your three to see on the offensive side of the football is going to go to wide receiver Tutu Atwell. Of course, Puka's week one uh, story is next level. That's some pretty awesome stuff going on for Puka, uh, which uh, who did <laughs> was Darian Kendrick called him uh, uh, Puka Doncic, and that is really cool. What the heck? Why did I not think of that? That's so sick. I've been, uh, I changed my fantasy team name to uh, uh, Nakua Matata, uh, but also Tutu Train. Is, uh, is, it's in the running. We'll see what happens. But uh, uh, Tutu is, is my pick here. And uh, mainly because Puka here, he had uh, such a sick week one. I feel like a lot of attention is going to go to him now. I mean, with 10 catches, 119, I mean, I think that uh, some focus from the 49ers secondary will go to him. And I will say that the way that Tutu was, A, utilized, and also the way that he was running his routes, um, I will say that he's probably going to be more consistent throughout the season uh, this year, if all goes well. Um, I'm, I'm, thrilled if if uh tutu can just like have that season where we're like oh finally this is who he was supposed to be which is really cool but the way that he was like coming in motion and then so you can get off like the press and stuff like that and the way that he's he was running his routes not very sharp but very like curved out and stuff and i liked that with him specifically uh, because it seemed like he was able to kind of push the defender and then just kind of glide away from him with his speed which is super sick to see so hopefully that does continue and that's kind of what i'm watching for is tutu in motion and just getting those like he had one where it was he he's he's on the outside he motions in and then kind of like the ball snapped he curves in and around and it was just a sick play so um obviously uh tutu uh, we've had our concerns about tutu in the past but maybe this is uh maybe he's turning a corner a little bit and uh no pun intended but uh or like reference intended there but uh maybe he can keep this going and i'm super pumped to see it i would absolutely be thrilled to see Tutu. So it's uh, Matthew Stafford, Kyron Williams, and Tutu Atwell as your three to see on the offensive side of the football. Moving over to the defense here. So uh, the 49ers offense obviously did a really good job as well. Uh, they are ranked fourth in the NFL uh, coming into this game, but the Rams defense, what up? Rams defense, second in the NFL right now. Of course, it's just one game, so uh, we do got to keep that in mind, but that is absolutely incredible. Uh, 49ers offense, uh, 12th in the NFL in passing. The Rams defense, 4th against the pass. 95 yards. That is so awesome. And then against the run, uh, the Rams are 11th. Uh, so a little bit higher up uh, than we would uh, think, maybe, with 85. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm crazy here. But uh, the 49ers getting it done on the ground, 3rd in the NFL. And then points being scored, tied with the Rams at 6, with uh, 30 points being put up against the Steelers last week. And the Rams defense gave up 13. That is 6th in the NFL. So, uh, of course, uh, one thing to, to kind of keep in mind here, too, is that uh, a good chunk of all these numbers, and I know that these, like, 95 passing yards, 85 rushing yards, 
and still, like, that was, like, all in the first half. One of the sick, sickest second-half performances I've seen out of this Rams team, which is absolutely incredible. Let's go into the three to see here. And uh, we're going to start with cornerback Darian Kendrick. So DK did give up that touchdown to DK Metcalf uh, last last week. Uh, but I really like the way that he responded. The attitude that DK plays with is very exciting. So I'm, I'm pumped to see him. It was really cool to see him on Rams Revealed with JB Long this week and kind of get a little bit of an inside look into, into the DK brain, which was obviously awesome. I uh, would love to see that. Uh, I've been a big fan of DK. Um, the, last year, I was a big fan of him. I thought that he was going to be the guy that, like, over Durant, but, of course, that didn't happen. Not a complaint. <laughs> if my predictions are wrong, that's fine by me. But um, Darian Kendrick coming in this year, he looks very, very strong, and um, I'm, I'm very pumped to see his, uh, his 2023 season for sure. So we're keeping an eye on him very closely. Next up, edge rusher Byron Young. So Young, uh, absolutely awesome motor on him. He started with a few harsh angles, of course. Uh, but he did clean it up, and uh, he was getting after it. I'm really excited to see uh, what Young looks like as the season ends. So, like, obviously, there's a lot of season left, um, and he's still going He's going into his second NFL game. So, obviously, we got to, like, remember that uh, that part of it. Um, but So he's a little bit raw, but he's definitely got all of the tools to get after it and be such a sick pass rusher. And, obviously, he's next to Aaron Donald, which is going to be my third of the three to see here. Of course, AD makes the list here. Um, he showed uh, last week that in any moment, that in any given time, he can just embarrass an offensive lineman, which is super cool. Um, it's hilarious to think the people who were kind of talking about this offseason, they, they were like, AD's falling off. He's not the same guy anymore. But we saw on multiple, not multiple occasions that it took multiple people to block Aaron Donald, which just tells us Rams fans who have seen this guy play for years, ever since like the St. Louis days, uh, that Aaron Donald's still Aaron Donald. So, Obviously, and uh, when he's you know screaming into the face of a quarterback, and uh, that quarterback is yelling "Oh my God" and throwing the ball away, that's just um that's just your basic human response. <laughs> that is that's what you're supposed to scream when Aaron Donald's running free at you, looking to absolutely destroy your soul. That's just the correct thing to do. <laughs> All right. So that is your game preview. Again, if you would like to be entered for uh, the giveaway for a free Ram Showcase T-shirt, all you got to do is comment below. Uh, where your or who your favorite Rams player is. Very simple stuff. If you're having issues with that, maybe you're listening to me on a weird podcast uh, platform, anything like that, feel free to tweet or exit, I don't know, post to me. I don't know. What is the verbiage there? Holy crap. And then, or like Instagram, hit me up, uh, comment on a Facebook uh, post on Ram Show, on the Ram Showcase uh, Facebook. And uh, once I like and or respond to you, uh, that's your confirmation that you're in. And then, of course, we'll give that away on uh, Ram Showcase Live, uh, which is going to be, uh, of course, uh, taking place after uh, or on Monday, which well, they always are. But I'll try to post uh, the timing of that uh, and when that will happen. You don't have to be present to win. Uh, I will give it some time uh, if you are the winner. And we're going to do that right away in the stream, too. So if you do happen to miss that stream, go ahead and click on it. Watch until the giveaway, then bounce if you need to. That's totally fine. Uh, that's kind of a place just to kind of hang out and chat Rams, uh, which is really fun. But we'll do that pretty quick in the um, in the Ram Showcase live on Monday and uh, get you a Ram Showcase shirt. Again, if you don't want to leave it up to chance, RamShowcase.com. That's absolutely where you can uh, find yours. Rams fans, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, if you would like to check out the entire podcast, which includes uh, the first part of the show uh, before the game preview and the fan quesos, uh, find Ram Showcase wherever you already find your other favorite podcasts. It's everywhere. It's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, other places. So go ahead and check it out there. RamShowcase.com is always embedded on the front page there as well. Uh, so check it out. And also, Ram Showcase t-shirts, that's where you find them. RamShowcase.com. Peace!